What's up guys? Um, figured I'd do a video this week, just kind of some odds and ends. Gonna, I haven't fed my Ackies any um, mice in a long time, so let's go out there and give them a good feed. Um, we've got Bodie down here, relaxing. Bodie boy, Moody. I love that dog more than anything in this world. He's probably my best friend. Um, we got Harley down here. Hey, Harley. Hey, Harley. All right. Let's, uh, going to do some feeding. And then we are also going to, um, I want to show you guys a pair of animals that I've been raising up that I have not uh, given you an update on in a while. Um, they are beautiful. So uh, the next pair of animals are some animals that I'm raising up. These are animals that um, are really, really nice. Um, and uh, this particular pair, you can tell, um, this is a Sumatran uh, short tail python. They were incorrectly uh, labeled as blacks um, in the early 2000s and in the, the 90s, but they aren't. Uh, this is the female that I have. Uh, she was produced by Kara Norris. Um, really, really uh, black parents. I've got all the pedigree information as well, but I've been raising these guys up. Um, I'm really, really excited about them. They're just awesome, awesome animals. Like, I just absolutely love them. Um, Harley, you're gonna get a nip if you don't move. You need to go lay down. <laughs> Harley's wanting to, to get in on the action, but um, these guys could probably be a little bit bigger if I fed them more, but they get pretty much a meal every, I guess on a good week, it would be 10 days, but most of the time I'm giving them a couple weeks between feedings and I don't feed them very big meals. Um, but as you could tell, really uh, laid back and uh, they're problem free. Um, there's like... These are like the easiest snakes in the world for me to care for. Um, but this is the female. I'm gonna take the male out real quick. I've got him right here. Okay. So he, you know what? I think, let's see, I think he shed, but this is the male. He's a little bit smaller, um, but really, really pretty animal. Um, these guys ate last night, so um, it wasn't a big meal, but they've, they're all buried under their mulch. But yeah, that's all. I, in fact, that if you got for you guys that um, are asking how to keep these, I've I'm not like the most experienced. It, it, you know, I'm not a short tail guru or anything, but. Um, I have been keeping them for several years and uh, although I only have a pair of bloods and a, a pair of these Sumatrans now, um, at one point I did have a dozen or so animals, but I keep mine on um, cocoa and the cocoa uh, like chunks, not the, not the fine husk, but the cocoa chunks. 
Um, that's mostly because I'm out here in Northern California and it's pretty dry climate. So I have a really hard time with the um, humidity. So the, the, the mulch or the bedding that I use has to be something that I can, you know, keep uh, the humidity up. So um, I have tried mulch, but it's really hard to get here in California and it's kind of expensive. But uh, the cocoa chunks, I like those. Uh, the animals will bury underneath them and that, you know, they're ambush predators in the wild anyway. So um, I like seeing that behavior because that's kind of what they've evolved to do. Uh, really, really pretty eyes on these. Um, you know, the orange eyes. I don't know if it's showing in focus or not, but I absolutely love uh, this, the, this pair of animals. I mean, they are just so awesome. But uh, the other uh, substrate that you could use is just paper. Uh, you can go on uline.com and on uline, you can get unprinted newspaper. Um, fairly cheap. I think you get 50 bucks for a big, big stack or a big roll. Um, I, I'm sorry, a roll of them. Uh, and it lasts a long time, I guess, depending on your collection. But the one thing with these guys that I will echo is that spot cleaning is not the easiest thing to do uh, with uh, shorties, as I like to call them, uh, short tail pythons, um, because they, when they go to the bathroom, uh, they don't do it after, you know, every meal or two, like with most species, these animals will hold on. And so they may only go uh, release the waste maybe once a month or once every other month. But when they do, it's excessive because again, it's been built up and they release just a tremendous amount of urates. Um, and you know, the size of the, not to get too detailed or gross you guys out, but Hey, I mean, if you're keeping the reptiles and you're watching this video, I'm sure you don't shy away from cleaning up uh, snake waste whenever, um, duty calls. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they have, Let's put it this way. They've dropped the kids off at the pool. That The size rivals some of my boxers. So, um, and again, I'm not a heavy feeder. But anyway, um, just figured I'd, I'd do an update with you guys on these. Um, I really, really love them. If you're thinking about getting short tail pythons, I mean, I kind of got these as an afterthought. I wanted to just try a pair of them after having a bunch of bloods and liking the bloods. And now that I've had these and I've started raising them up, um, I I would almost wager to say that I'd like to have more of these than actual bloods. I mean, they are just so awesome. These are not morphs. These have been selectively bred. Uh, also, this one was produced by Kara Norris. It's unrelated to the female, but um, he is not quite as dark as she is, but He's still very, very, he's still a very dark animal. Um, I'm sitting right next to a window that's over this way. So that's why you probably see a little bit of shine on them. Um, but I've got the lights on just because I want to give you guys a good representation of what these guys look like, what they're growing into. Uh, as far as demeanor goes, you can obviously tell they, they tolerate being handled pretty well. As long as you, um, you know, they're not a, adept to, to climbing, so you got to support the bottom a little bit. But, you know, I mean, tongue flicking, super laid back, placid animals. At night, that's different. Um, these guys sight feed like no problem whatsoever. I don't ever have to tease them or anything. In fact, some nights, if I really don't feel like messing with them, I'll just drop the prey in the tub and they will snag it in just a matter of a few minutes. But uh, you can hear them kind of, they do, they do huff, but you have to remember that's all bluff. So I'm taking the female out again, just because I want you guys to get a good, a good um, idea of her size now that I just had the male out. Now they're, they're the same age. Um, but again, if I'm going to feed an animal a bigger meal, or maybe I'm gonna squeeze another feeding in, I'm gonna do it for the females, not the males. So that's why she's a little bit bigger, but just really, really cool animals. I can't say enough good things about them. 
they're very unique in my opinion to a lot of the other stuff out there. Um, so if you're looking for something that, you know, doesn't get too terribly big, I mean, these animals are gonna get, you know, 10, 15 pounds, but, um, you know, they don't get really long. Uh, you could keep them adequately in a four foot by two foot by 12 inch tall cage, or uh, my preferred uh, cage, which obviously I don't have any adults right now, um, but I would like to put them in the large vision uh, boa tubs. I think they're like, um, you know, they're the big ones. A lot of guys use them. I know Vin Brusso uses them and has bred a lot of snakes in them, which I also think he breeds these in them as well. But I won't drag this out any longer. Just kind of wanted to do an update with you guys. As I have stated in the past, I'm trying to be a little more consistent with my videos. So I'm hoping that um, just me putting some content out there, you guys will get an idea of what I'm working with and I can bring some exposure to some of the stuff that isn't quite as common. Uh, dare I say, somewhat rare. Um, I, I sometimes go after rarer bloodlines, but um, I, don't, I don't have anything that's like super, super hard to get and rare. But I do have a lot of stuff that's more of a niche uh, species and that, you know, you're not gonna find at most of your reptile shows. So um, these guys, I actually had to get on a wait list to get them. Kara Norris from the blood cell is awesome. I mean, really, she she gives you stickers and she feeding cards and documentation and a laminate piece of paper that has the pedigree and pictures of the parents on them with the ID number, as well as a hatchling photo. Um, she even uh, has sent uh, the eggs before, not in, with every animal, but I did get an animal which actually sent me the egg. Um, so anyway, all that stuff kind of goes, the, you know, going the extra mile, I, I appreciate it. Doesn't mean that the quality of the animal is any less than someone else who has ample experience doing it, no. But, you know, it does show that they care about their animals and they, they care about their reputation. And that's kind of a nice little thank you to the customer. So I appreciate it. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, Go ahead and leave a comment. I will try to answer them as best and as quickly as possible. If you have any suggestions about stuff that you'd like me to see um, or like me to do, like any other videos, um, go ahead and hit me up. You can reach out to me at uh, godboldexotics at gmail.com or you could just leave me a comment here. Um, also, uh, anyone that would like to start or become our first patron on Patreon, I would really appreciate it. Um, we don't have any patrons yet, um, but you know, I, I'm still regardless trying to make sure I'm putting content out every week. So I appreciate those of you that are watching, following and interacting. Uh, this is not my day job, but it is a labor of love and I'm just trying to share it with you guys. So again, thank you. And I will see you guys next weekend. Peace.